Well, hello and welcome to the Thursday edition of the DC Today. I am very excited to be with you from beautiful East Hampton, New York. Um, I think that it was a quite interesting day in the market, and I want to give you a little rundown um, and, of course, uh, get you all excited for Dividend Cafe coming tomorrow. Um, bottom line is that the Dow ended up being up 164 points today. And yet the NASDAQ was down over 2%, which I think may have been the worst day of the year in the NASDAQ. I didn't look it up, though, but I mean, it's near that. You had consumer discretionary down 3.5% um, just today alone. Uh, communication services down 2.5%. Technology was down over 2 And at the same time, you had more defensive sectors doing quite well. Utilities up 1.85%. Healthcare up 1.65 and energy was up 1.3%. So it was a very bifurcated result, uh, kind of not just an up day in the Dow, but a good up day and not just a down day in the NASDAQ, but a real down day. And that, of course, was very 2022-like. Um, you have not seen a lot of that bifurcation this calendar year much. The primary cause, by the way, is somewhat irrelevant. It was really heavy weightings around two major names in, in the both NASDAQ and to a lesser degree in the S&P, Tesla and Netflix. And they got hit pretty hard today around their earnings results that came out yesterday. And I have a link about Tesla and Netflix in the DC Today about that news event. But uh, more relevant to kind of our purposes, you, you just simply had a very um, high dispersion of results across the market. I think that is a more healthy market when the markets are kind of moving based on the underlying ingredients uh, of their constituents, not just all up together or down together. That sentiment that when it can really drive all markets higher, I actually don't care for. And that's what we've seen a lot of lately. Um, in fact, the I'm a contrarian, so I follow investor sentiment very heavily. And the bull bear sentiment, you really got to the highest level of bulls in some of these surveys that we follow and aggregated indexing of um, retail investor sentiment. And the level of people identifying as bulls got to the highest since uh, April of 2021. And the level of bears got to the, lo to, to the lowest level rather since June of 2021. So over two years of um, low bear level and high bull level, okay? Re reflecting a lot of optimism in the market. And, and again, just so you don't think you're hearing me wrong, I'm saying this correctly. I view all that feel-goodedness as a bad thing. And, and when everyone is a lot of feel-badness, I think is a good thing. And it, DC Today is my podcast and I can make up words whenever I want. Okay, um, what else do I want to cover about today? The 10-year, all bonds sold off. Uh, yields moved up quite a bit. The 10-year is still at 3.85%, so it had sold off 30-plus basis points in the last several weeks. You had a big rally in bonds, uh, but today it moved higher. The 10-year up 11 basis points to 3.85. Oil was up another half a percent. It's still staying there above the $75 mark per barrel, closing at 75.70. Um, but initial jobless claims fell to 228,000 on the week, the weekly jobless claims. It had been at a 254,000 average that has now come down a few weeks in a row after having gone up a few weeks in a row. And that's taking out a lot of this sentiment that was wondering, like, oh, is the job factor about to get worse? Because, of course, you know, in the bizarro land that is 22 and 2023, bad news is supposed to be good news and good news is supposed to be bad news. Um, and people were getting worried that the, um, excuse me, people were getting happy that the job numbers were going uh, in the wrong direction. And they've actually kind of seems to have leveled out and in fact improved a bit, at least as far as initial uh, unemployment claims go on a weekly basis. I also want to point out existing home sales came in 40,000 less than expected last month. Um, this is the lowest level of sales volume for existing homes, not total homes, but it's the lowest level of volume since 2011. Median home prices across the country year over year were down 1%, and um, with no transaction uh, uh, volume 
to really validate the price level. I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, but you know, where transactions are happening, you still are seeing multiple offers and a full third of deals that did close, which again was not very many, but a third of deals that did close closed above the asking price. So it's a very mixed bag. There's not a lot going on, but where it is, prices are not collapsing. And in fact, it's still kind of a softening, but reasonably healthy market. And yet with just most people in a wait and see mode about housing, more and more data kind of verifying that all the time. Um, so that's the basic update here in the market. I won't leave it there. Uh, I won't go beyond there. Um, I do want you to read the dcda.com. There's an Ask David wondering my view about how we look at certain things having to do with electric vehicles and, and particularly uh, company news that might affect our dividend growth perspective. I think you'll find the answer interesting. And I'm very excited about tomorrow's Dividend Cafe, uh, which will be delving into the subject of onshoring, offshoring, reshoring, nearshoring, American jobs, um, particularly manufacturing, our relationship to the supply chain and what some of the investment impact and economic perspective on that whole subject is. It's a lot more exciting than it sounds. So check out Dividend Cafe tomorrow. And thank you, as always, for watching and listening and reading the DC Today.